Jenny Persia didn't live out in the middle of nowhere. Her neighbors weren't miles away. Jenny lived on a street where the houses are so close, everyone sort of shares the same front yard. But as Steve Dunleavy reports, the trees in the town of Magnolia, New Jersey, are tied with purple ribbons, a sad reminder that things will never be the same. She was an angel with a dirty face. A tomboy who looked great in a dress. And some might say that God had been overly generous to Jennifer Persia. She was a daughter that anybody would like to have. If we had a child right now, I would like to have somebody like her. I remember when I was first dating my husband, uh, she always wanted to comb my hair, comb my hair, brush my hair. And when her uncle Lee married Susan, Jennifer got top honors. She was the flower girl at our wedding. Um, she was five at the time, and she was the cutest little thing. Um, I personally felt she was the highlight of the wedding because um, she always had this silly little grin, and she looked like a little cherub or a little angel. And as that little angel grew up, she never changed. She always radiated happiness. She's silly, she's comical, and she always liked clowning around always happy. Whether it was a good day or a bad day, she was always that sparkle that no matter how bad a day you had, it wasn't that bad because she was still there smiling. Smile on her face. At the age of 16, she could outrun the boys in the track team, throw discus, play the sax, and was a member of the school band Color Guard. Jennifer had just turned 16, and the world had endless possibilities until two weeks ago. It was there after Easter. School was closed. Um, she went to track practice in the morning, then came home, uh, spent the day doing what 16-year-old girls do. She was on the phone a lot. Uh, she seems to have done some of her homework. Uh, talked to her mom at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Then, as kids played and families prepared dinner and a warm spring breeze blew through the quiet little town of Magnolia, Jennifer Persia was in her home, being murdered. Jennifer was stabbed in the trunk more than 20 times. Uh, there was also some blunt trauma to her upper body and, and head. My mom called me about quarter after two in the morning, uh, on Tuesday morning. That's when I found out about it. What did she say? She said her baby's gone. Jennifer is gone. I can't understand in that neighborhood how anybody could get in there and get out without being seen. Authorities say there was no forced entry. And what made it more horrific, Jennifer knew a killer. And maybe the neighborhood did too. And never thought to look twice. She uh, did everything she could to save her own life. She was stabbed some two dozen times. She was strangled. She was beaten. But she still had the strength during that struggle to resist valiantly. Jennifer's will to live was strong, and because of evidence found at the scene, police believe Jennifer was able to injure her killer by smashing him with a mug. This was someone who had terrible, bottled-up rage against women or against Jennifer in particular. It was Jennifer's mother, Georgia, who found her daughter's body when she came home from work. I know that she tried to resuscitate her or whatever, or get someone to help her. Um, I don't think she really believed that she was dead when she first came home. As a town of Magnolia mourned and cops searched for clues, the senseless death of this teenager became more bizarre. Cops found $200 of Susan B. Anthony coins missing. It's like, why just that, not, you know, there, if there was jewelry in the house or something like that, why didn't they take that too? Why just take the Susan B. Anthony's? Questions went unanswered. Preparations were made to put Jennifer to rest. Family and friends gathered. Some wondered if the murderer was there among them, one of their own. If he doesn't turn himself in, and Mick or one of 20 other people get a hold of him, it'll be the longest, slowest, most miserable death the person ever figured. And the state doesn't have to worry about finding him because he won't be found. Others mourned in a different way. Well, I already said my goodbyes, and uh, I like to think that I'll see her again someday.
school children lined the streets to bid farewell as a casket was driven by. And her school band played on through their tears. Visions of unspeakable pain were everywhere. We'll never know what her wedding day was like. We won't even see her graduate from high school. It's hard to know that she was cut down in the prime of her life. As purple balloons were released into the sky, the world said its last goodbye to God's little angel with a dirty face. Police are still investigating Jenny's murder. If you missed the numbers for our Roseanne Arnold phone poll, get a pen or pen.